Hi folks and welcome to this video. What we're going to be doing is looking at rendering inside UE4. So I've got a Dragon model, uh, which you can see on the screen at the moment, and here it is rendered inside of iRay from uh, Substance Painter. And we're going to hop over into UE4 and render to a similar style, if you like. And what I'm hoping to basically give you is a bit of an idea of how to present assets in a simple way uh, to a decent quality. So to start the video, um, there are a couple of things that I've just got to mention. There is a nice sharpen effect that I use, uh, which is produced by Christoph Tepper, which you can get from his Korath map, which is really cool and a really nice sort of post-process edition. So do check that out. And also I have some lovely lava, which you can see has been produced by Janine Smith. So those are two um, additional things. So I'm just going to hop over to UE4, and this is an example of uh, what we're going to do. So to render in this particular manner, all you need is a model of your choice uh, with some nice PBR textures and uh, a bit of patience. So I'm going to make myself a new level, and I'm going to make sure it's an empty one. I don't want to be working with any of the other uh, sample maps at this point. So once I've got a basic level, one of the first things I do is I make myself a floor material. So I'm going to drag and drop in a cube. There we go. And this cube, I'm going to put a floor material on it. So I'm going to right click in my content browser and I'm just going to make this a floor material. We'll open this up. And inside this, I'm going to make a constant. I'm just going to hold one and left click. I'm going to right click on this and convert it to a parameter. And I'm just going to call this gray. And I'm going to fire this into my emissive color. And I'm going to change this material to be unlit. And then save that. And there we go. Done. And I'm going to right click on my floor material and make this an instant. I'm going to apply this to my box. Now, at the moment, the box, or this cube rather, um, is black. And that's because my gray value here, if I just tick on this inside my instance, set to zero. So if I just add a hint of uh, shade to that, it will start to come alive. So it doesn't look very gray at the moment. That's because the lighting is all kinds of wrong. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to make this quite big on the X and Y. So it's just going to be a very large ground plane like that. And in my project, I've got some meshes here. I'm just going to drag and drop my good old dragon head here and bring it about. So it looks all kinds of horrible and washed out at the moment, but uh, you can kind of ignore that for a moment. So how do we start? Well, what I'm going to be working with is a very simple light rig at the moment. I'm going to work with a three-point setup. And I'm going to drag in my first light here. And I'm going to hit Control, Shift, and P, become that light. And I'm going to hold down my right mouse button and just use WASD to sort of target the light. And I'm going to place it in this sort of position. And I'm going to be doing that because I'm going to try and have my camera here. So it's almost like it's being lit, not at midday sun, but in that sort of similar place. So what I'll do, just to help me out, I'm going to go to my little triangle up here. Click on it to go to bookmarks. And I'm going to choose set bookmark 1. And if I ever lose my dragon now, I can press one on my keyboard and it will snap back, which is really powerful. So I've got my one light in there, which is great. And I need two others. So I'm going to drag one more. And this one, I'm going to become the light again. Hold right mouse button and use WASD. And I'm going to kind of light it from the side here. So if I then eject, you'll see that I've got my two lights like that. So this one is basically the fill light. And this one is my key light. And I'm going to drag in one more. There we go. Hold Control Shift and P once more. And I'm going to try and fire at the back of the dragon, something like that. And I'm going to eject. So this is my rim or my backlight. And that's my basic light setup. Now, the values of these things uh, we will customize in a second. Uh, but what I'm going to do before I start my adventure on that is I'm going to go to my visual effects mode if you like down here and I'm going to drag and drop a post process volume around the dragon and the first thing I'm going to do because there's so many properties in here which are awesome and I'm going to click on unbound that's the first thing and that's just going to apply 
all of the effects inside this volume to the whole screen. So I'm going to come up here a little bit and the first part of business is to go to my auto exposure and I'm going to set my minimum and max brightness to 0.5. There we go. Now I do this first because it makes it a lot easier to figure out the values that I'm going to start picking in these lights. So obviously this is really bright when I'm looking at my dragon, right? So if I press 1 and go into my, my view here, if I go back to my substance render, you'll see just how different those values are. So what we can do is if I take that, that first light here, so I can cut this right down. So let me just set, set that to an intensity of 2 maybe. And the fill light, the one to the side here, is normally half that of a key. So we'll do that. There we go. So that's that's instantly loads, loads better, because I can actually see the model, right? This one, on this, this actual rim light here, um, what I can do with this is I can actually increase this if I want. And I normally colorize it a little bit as well. So I normally put like a hint of a hint of blue in it. And the fill one here, I often put a bit of orange in it as well. So warm it up a little bit. There we go. So that's looking loads better. I'm just going to hit G here and it will get rid of uh, my UI for a minute and just look at the model. So that's pretty cool. Now I could carry on tweaking this. I could make it darker still if I wanted. So I could, again, put my, say my key light at 1 and my um, fill. 0.5, remembering to go halves, or I could bump it up a little bit more. These values don't get too uh, flustered over because they do take some time to get right, and at the moment there's a bunch of other things we're going to do, so we'll come back to them in a bit. In terms of other lighting, I'm going to drag and drop in a skylight. There we go. So that's what it is. I'll just hit G there to bring it back. And what I'm going to do, folks, is with all of these lights, if I select my first three, I'm going to set them to movable. And you notice that the, the rebuild error is gone now. I'm going to come through to my skylight and set that to movable as well. And I'm going to make sure my mesh is also set to movable. So I'm working completely with uh, dynamic lighting here. And that's important because then for this particular model, I don't have to light map it. And I'll avoid any kind of shading from that, which is great. Um, obviously, if you're doing an environmental asset, then you can use light mass to get really cool bake from that. So, uh, looking at my skylight again, I'm just going to come down the properties. And there's a nice tick box here, which on your screen might be hidden away by this little drop down, which basically hides the advanced properties. So, here we've got lower hemisphere is solid color. And if we turn this off, it's not having a, a, a massive effect now, but if I'm to increase that intensity, say, to 4, um, later on, you'll, you'll start seeing more of an effect with this. So it's again, it will, it will build up as we start building more of an environment. Sadly, at this point in time, you, know, if, you can see I'm not getting an effect here. There's a couple of reasons why. Um, and that's probably with this threshold here, but we're working with quite a dark, a dark scene. So you're not going to get a massive kick from this skylight just yet. So we have to be a little bit patient. The same really with these here. So how can we get the skylight into action then? Uh, a couple of things. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add an exponential height fog, and you'll see straight away that's what it's going to do. It adds a big kick like that which is cool. So we actually get a bit of additional light for the background. Now I'm going to make the floor and the floor uh, sort of blend together. So I'm going to click on my in scattering color and I use my eyedropper and you can see I can sample that floor here. And what I start to get now is a nice gradient upwards and it's up to you really at this point if you want the gradient or not. If you don't then you can just increase the density a little bit um, and that, that adds quite a lot really. So that's good. We've got some background color. Now that skylight, how are we going to fix that? We need some reflection capture actors. So we need some of these. We're going to bring this in and around. There we go. And if I update my capture, you'll see that my dragon has just changed color quite dramatically. And that's the skylight kicking in because my reflection capture actor is, is now on board. So if I come back to my skylight, 
and I can play a bit now, right? So changing that value, you can see it actually does something. So there's a couple of things I had to do to kick that in. One was to complete the environment, so I didn't have just a black void, and the other was to put in the reflection capture actor. So let's see, what did, what did this tick box actually do here? So if I go back to, say, I'll go back to just one, and if I turn it on, you see there's not much difference. If I go back to, say, up to four, and turn it off, you see there's quite a big difference there in terms of sort of the blacks that it gets rid of from the render. So four is a very intense, maybe over the top intensity uh, in most cases. So this is where we could start going back to the original lights and start to chill those out a bit and have a bit of a balancing act between maybe the skylight and the directional light. So this is just a balance as to sort of taste, right? To try and figure out what you think is is correct. And there's no right answer here. It's it's just a bit of a a bit of play. So I've got say on my key light, I went for 1.5. My fill I put up to 0.75 on intensity, and then my skylight here, I've got a value of three, maybe two and a half, something like that. Okay, so that looks pretty cool. I think for the most part, I'm pretty happy with that. It's got a good look to it. I'm going to over, override my bookmark as well. I think my bookmark's maybe got just a bit too much of an angle at it for my taste. So I'm going to try and center my beastie like that. Let's go. And we shall go back to bookmarks, set bookmark one. Let's have a look. That's better. Okay. So more toys. Right. We're about, we've got a, a good section of this render done now. And now the sort of the last leg all lies within the post-process volume. So there's a few things I'd like to do. One is maybe increase some of the accuracy of the reflections, add a bit of AO, and put a bit of depth of field on to blend that transition there, which would be really cool. So um, let's, I'll try and go through these in orders. Now, I'm not going to mess with too much with uh, my overall color grading at the top, but in terms of our lens effects, I'm going to add a bit more of a stronger vignette. So just pushing in those, those sort of blacks from the corners there, I think always looks nice. And have a look at my bloom. I often will turn this down rather than anything. So just, just turning it down. Remember if we put this up, silly amount, it looks horrible. So I tend to just lower this a little bit at this point. Okay, we'll collapse that. Let's have a go at the depth of field. This is always a fun and, and sort of tricky one to get right. So I'm going to turn on my method and I'm going to set Gaussian depth of field, which will blur everything. And I'm going to enable focal distance, focal region, and the near transition, the far transition region. And I will also enable the blur sizes at the bottom here. So I'm going to up my focal region just a little bit. And I'm going to lower my focal distance. So I'm going to bring basically the, the focus of my camera a bit closer because I'm quite close with this dragon. And what you can see now, what you can see now is I've got this blurred transition at the back, which is really cool. Now, if I wanted to play around with the style of blur, I've obviously got these sliders here, which make it even cooler. Now, I don't have too much in the way of a near transition at the moment, but you can see that's kind of when it goes, okay, you're too close, blur it. So you do have that to sort of play around with. You can perhaps lower that if need be, or maybe raise it. It's kind of up to you really as to how close you want your renders, but I think that works quite well and it's blended in the fog and the box really well there. So I'm going to collapse that. And I'm going to expand my ambient occlusion. I'm going to up that. And that adds quite a lot of nice sort of shading inside the nostrils and under the horns. That's really good. I'm going to expand my screen space reflections and turn up the quality of this. Now, this will be really noticeable on metallic objects. And obviously, with this particular monster, you're not going to get quite the same sort of kick from it, to be fair. Um, what else then? That's sort of the last thing that I'll do through this. If I go to my content folder, I've got these material sharpens, and these are from the Korath map that I mentioned at the start. So if I click on the plus button here, and I'm going to swap to asset reference, 
and just drag and drop this on. If I can do that right, there we go. What you'll get is you'll get a huge pop. So if I just turn that slider off, blurred sharp, blurred sharp, and it really does start to push and pump out the render really well. So at this point, you're starting to get a render that's you know of the same sort of vein as this. Um, in terms of differences and things you could do better, um, I would say that with the substance render, there was a bit of red in the gray, and and you can you can get that. Um, at the moment, though, the reason why you can't get it is because the, the gray color itself is a, a scalar, so you could do a vector parameter instead. I created that by holding three, left click, right click, and convert it to a parameter. So let's have a look. We'll go for gray color. Let's see if we can get this. This will be a bit harder to achieve, folks, but we will try. And we'll have a go, something like that. I'll drag and drop that in. Save that. It's a bit dark, maybe. Let's override it. Play with the saturation a little bit. Yeah, that's pretty good. Obviously, if I change that color, I have to go back to my uh, my fog. And go back up to the top where we've got the in scattering color. There we go. That's pretty cool, right? And I think at this point you you are almost getting the substance look inside of you. For uh, in some ways, it's a bit stronger than substance because that sharpen effect is is kicking it very very strongly and also maybe the rim light is a bit harsh but it just depends on the style you want really so from here um you're pretty much done if i press f11 yeah that, that that's looking pretty clear to me it's a bit overly contrasty maybe so the sharpen is a bit aggressive but uh, you could turn that down perhaps so what i would do now is literally just go to high resolution screenshot Put in as big as you want. Um, take your screenshot. I've obviously gone four times here, so it'll give you a big sort of four times shot, and then you're done. And you've uh, you've got a nice simple render for your portfolio. Uh, but some things to note really is pick backgrounds that aren't uh, too aren't too distracting. Uh, definitely look for different sort of angles and, and renders and things like that. Um, don't be afraid of going pretty crazy uh, with your sort of compositions. Think about your different types of space, your positive and negative space. Um, if you want to, you can also use bookmarks to then create a camera from them. And that's quite nice. Um, cameras are pretty cool because obviously you've got all these different sort of effects that you can add. Uh, the one thing I would say with cameras, if you do use the, the triangles to create a camera, is you can right click on them and you can snap the view to the object which will basically give you that camera view which is really quite cool uh, but yeah you've got all sorts of i suppose uh, rotations and, and other bits and pieces that you could do on this right and, and tilt your dragon however you want uh, and obviously each camera's got its own unique sort of post process too so hopefully that's useful and it gives you some ideas on how to quickly can easily make a fun little render inside of you for. Thanks.